Let's go to the word of the Lord from 2 Samuel. Chapter 24. <coughs> Verse 3. Brother Mark. Let's see. Make sure that's not Isaiah. Let's see. Okay. I do get those guys mixed up. Samuel and Isaiah. You said, well, I never have one, but you probably don't even read. No, oh, Lord forgive me. That, that was a joke. That was a joke. And uh, <clears throat> usually it's a first thing that I get confused with Christ. Excited about what God is doing. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, 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 Danny, you did exactly what when you, you did exactly what I would did. I would stop. Fix that thing if I had to throw it out the back door. And then time is too valuable. Life is too short. Heaven is too sweet. And hell is too hot to back up now. Amen. You didn't hear what I said. If you heard what I said, you could have drank an awesome. Amen. It's just, it's, time is too short. Going to fight a battle? Yes, sir, I guess we will. You see, the enemy penetrates where he thinks he can do the most harm. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about when we were in Vietnam. When we would get into a fight, unless it was a real hard battle, our CO would tell us, do not open fire with the machine gun. Let it sit. Wait. And there was a reason he did that. Because he knew when that gun opened up, that that enemy was going to penetrate everything he had in that position to knock out our firepower. And that's what the devil does. He penetrates everything he's got right where you're the weakest at or whatever it is. He penetrates that area and tries to knock out everything you've ever done. Every day he tries to destroy it. And Jacob said, excuse me, Joab said, unto the king being King David. Now the Lord not listen carefully to this. If you, you get this verse of scripture, I wouldn't even have to preach. Now the Lord thy God add unto the people how many soever they be, a hundredfold, and that the eye of my Lord the king may see it. But why doest thy Lord why doth my Lord the King delight in this thing? David was just fixing to number Israel and he displeased God. And I've always thought, why did he displease God for him to number Israel? And then I got it. David was the king. Well, let me just let me go ahead and pray. When I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight. When God does the man. When God does the man. Father, bless this message tonight. In Jesus' name, bless your children. Give me the words to say, Lord, that would encourage and lift up someone tonight. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands and thank you now for Calvary. In the name of Jesus, you may be seated. God bless you. When David was the king of Israel, God was kind of, I got angry at Israel uh, because of their continued, continual backslide. Israel was kind of riding like a 20th century roller coaster. They were up and they were down. They were in and they were out. They had their problems. So David was going to count the children of Israel. He was going to number them and and, and what his intentions was to find out how many men of war that he had and, and how many of this and how many of that. And he was interested. He, was he knew he was going to have to go to war and, and to battle. And, and he was interested in finding out how many warriors he had available to go to battle. 
to fight the battle that the enemy was about to set the battle in array and David was concerned about it but it displeased God because the Bible teaches us that, that, jo, uh, that Joab knew and that God knew that the people, if the people were counted and David was successful in doing that and getting the count, it would have been so much easier for them and for David himself to lean on the arm of flesh rather than the arm of God. And God did not want Israel leaning on the arm of flesh. He didn't want them uh, uh, going into a battle uh, uh, fully armed and, and, and with uh, 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 enough men to uh, outnumber the enemy and, and, and win a battle in that fashion. He wanted Israel to win the battle with his help and not the help of man. He wanted Israel to conquer their enemy by the power of God and by, not by the power of their soldiers and the power of their men. Is anybody understanding? So it displeased God. God was not into this counting business. Uh, and Joab was trying to tell David this, uh, but it didn't work. And David went ahead and did what he was going to do. He numbered Israel and God was upset about it. And the Bible said... Joab said to David, The Lord thy God add unto the people. How many soever they be. You know what that's saying? He's Joab's telling David that when we get into the battle, when it, it, it may be in the heat of the battle. It, it may be right in the slap middle of the battle. It might not be before the battle. It may not ever take place before we go to battle. You may have to go to battle, David, but it, it, let it be that when we go to battle that God will add the men that we need to win the battle. It's going to be a God thing. It's not a man thing. Hear me today, friend. If we defeat the enemy of our soul, it's going to be a God thing. Man can't do it. It's going to be a God thing. And God, Joab told David, said God will add to us as we need them God will supply the need. I want to tell somebody tonight, I've had this message burning me up and had a chance to preach it, but I want to tell somebody tonight that God will add to your situation that that you need tonight. If you want to stand before God or stand with God, God will add to you that that you need. Well, Joab knew that even everything they needed to win the battle, any battle. See, Joab was captain of David's army. David was the head knocker, but Joab was the captain. And he knew everything they needed to win this battle, God would add to them. God could take 300 men. Gideon, he could take 300 men. And I might add to that, that's not an army. That's an apology. That's not a, that's not a fighting army. 300 men, we had, in our company, we had 200, somewhere between 200 and 250 men. And, and that's not an army, that's a company of men. And God's telling David, when we go to that battle, David, when we get in the battle, thank God for a captain that knew what he was talking about. He said God will add that that we need to win the battle. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to count the men. Just take what you got and go to the battle. He knew. He, he knew. And God would add to them so that the eyes of the king may see that God is literally fighting the battle. One writer said it's not by might. It's not by, by uh, it's not power, thank you, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Let me tell you something tonight. That devil you're fighting, you can't defeat him by yourself. It's not by your mind. It's not by your power, but it's by God's presence. And mark it in your book. Write it down and tell the devil I said it, that God will add to you that that you need tonight to win the battle. It must have been reassuring to 
to David when in the heat of the battle. How many remembers, this is not in the message, but I just kind of might just add in a little bit. Uh, how many remembers reading about Joshua? Was it Joshua that commanded the sun to stand still? And he stood still for what? Was it three hours? Was it an hour? Where's all my scholars? Well, he stood still anyway. And it don't matter if it's one minute or an hour. Israel was losing, was being defeated. And so Joshua knew that something had to be done. So he just turns around and commands the sun to stand still. He said, he said if, he, if, if, uh, if we don't get to have enough time to fight this battle, then we're going to lose this battle. I'm going to tell you, when you go to battle... I feel this in the Holy Ghost, children. When you go to battle, and you're in the battle right now, you may not realize it. You might be taking on small fire, but the big stuff's coming. And when you go to a battle, I want to tell you, if you're just back up and let God do the math, let God do what God does, and let God do the God thing in your life, if you'll just take courage and let God work in your life, I promise you, you'll win the battle. So it must have been pretty reassuring when in the heat of the battle to just to see how God could add whatever was necessary to win the battle. Just whatever it took, God could have, and I'm going to show you here in a little while, God could have added the sound of a big marching army. He could have added feet making the racket. He could have literally brought in soldiers from who knows where. But he could have just put it in the ears of the enemy that we're in trouble now. Oh, you're not hearing me, are you? God could have won in any way he wanted to win. Joab, that captain, knew. He knew what God could and would do. And he tries to tell David, David, God's going to add the men that we need. I don't know if he was talking about when the, when the Midianites oppressed Israel. In the days of Israel, God did the math. If you'll remember from the book of Judges, I'm not going to read all these verses. I got down here because time will not allow. And uh, Gideon, uh, and there, an angel came, angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak, the Bible said in, Ju in uh, Judges 6 and 11. And uh, uh, when the enemy came out against uh, the, the uh, Israelites, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto Gideon and, and said unto him, the Lord is with thee. And, and he said, uh, called him a mighty man of valor. Well, if you'll read this story, you'll find out Gideon was everything but a mighty man of valor. He was afraid. He was, uh, he was out behind the wine press thrashing wheat uh, because the enemy was coming upon them and, and taking everything they had. Are you understanding? And, and, and he said to him, said, uh, you're a mighty man of valor. And, and, and Gideon probably thought, man, you done run the wrong door, man. You got the wrong soldier. I'm not, I'm scared to death. And you know the story, and, and Gideon began to talk to the Lord and, and, and called Israel and, and, and got his bugle boy and, and said, Sound an alarm and, and sound a, 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 an assembly. That's the word I'm trying to look at. Sound an assembly with that horn and get all the men of Israel out here. We got, we got to set up the battle and get ready for war. And this bugle blower boy was telling old brother Wilhelm and I, and that horn he's got, he began to sound an alarm and, and blow and, and blast with that trumpet, and all of a sudden Israel fell out. I think it was 42,000. Is that right, Sister Chrissy? Sister? Thank you, sweetie. 32,000, excuse me. 32,000 men of war fell out for Gideon and, and got all things together. And, and didn't it begin to count with how much? 22? Well, we lose a million all the time. And 22,000. 
fell out for war. And, and Gideon gets out there and he starts to count. He tells some of his captains to count. And he got got up and 30, 22,000. You sure? 22,000. 22,000 men was ready for war. And God spoke to Gideon and said, you got too many men. He's going against four companies, four countries. He's going against a Mount Syria. Well, and three more. <laughs> Bunch of them. The Midianites. He's going against you know, a, a great army. And he God tells Gideon, said, You tell everybody that's afraid to go home. Go back to your tent. So Gideon made the announcement, as you know, and for everybody that was afraid and, and uh, uh, had a fearful heart to go home and, and uh, everybody, let's see, uh, 10,000, I believe it was, went home. Whew. I cut the odds way back. So Gideon's getting ready for battle and God speaks and says, you still got too many men. He said, take them to the watering hole. And every man that laps water like a dog. You take him to battle. And everybody else you see him home. Now listen carefully. They got to that water hole and 300 men lapped the water like a dog. And God said with 300 men, I'm going to deliver Israel. And the story goes and Gideon called got these 300 men, divided them into to three companies of 100 each, put pitchers in their hands, put a light in the pitcher, and said, when you hear the sound, when you hear me, when I break the pitcher and, and holler, you do likewise. And everybody hollered the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. 300 men, ladies and gentlemen, when Gideon let God do the math, Things happen. God added to that situation and 300 men won the victory. I'm telling you, I fought battles. You have. I have fought the devil. I'm like the Apostle Paul in one sense. I've seen like I fought the beast at Ephesus. But I'm telling you, when I let God in the picture, God always comes on. Oh, it may take me a while. I may be in that battle a long time. I may be dirty and sweaty and slimy and everything else. But honey, I'm going to come out. And so God delivered them. Then Gideon won a great victory that day by the power of God. Then Jehoshaphat, I'm trying to hurry, then Jehoshaphat got some trouble. God did the map for Jehoshaphat also. And the Bible said the, the, the children of Ammon, here's what I was trying to quote a while ago, Ammon, Moab, Mount Syria, they all come against Israel invaded Israel and Israel didn't know what to do and so Jehoshaphat goes to prayer, he goes to God and he talks to God and says God we don't know what's going to happen, we don't have any power against this great army that has come out against us, we don't know how to win this battle but he said our eyes are on you Lord, we're looking to you then all of a sudden the spirit of God moved up on a prophet and the prophet began to speak I believe his name was Gehazel he began to speak and said, Thus saith the Lord. Said, Now, nah, said, nah. uh, Get you some singers. You understood me right. Get some singers. Said, You're not going to have to fight in this battle. And get some singers. And, and I kind of like to. Paint a picture of that in my mind. I kind of like to think he got all the singers like we had here tonight. Now they wouldn't. They wouldn't like this part right here. <laughs> they would. get your tambourine, Mary Grace, and Abby, and Ganny, Sherry, Rebecca, Michelle, and Sam. You leave the drums here, they're too heavy, the piano can't go. But get you a tambourine. And you get out front of the army. You march in front of the army. You would have thought he'd put them behind the army. 
but he puts them in the front of the army. And said, when we get in that battle, I wonder what it sounds like. It probably wouldn't have mattered if it was okay. It probably wouldn't matter. I'm sure they was not singing in perfect harmony. I'm sure their genes were shaking and they were scared to death. I'm sure every time they took a step, their foot slid up in their boot. I believe they was afraid, but they got those tambourines, Hannah, and they begin to shake the tambourine and they begin to sing praises unto God. And you know what the Bible said? The enemy heard them. It must have sounded like a mass choir somewhere. It must have sound. It must have sound like a marching army. And all of a sudden, your Bible and my Bible explains it like this: They were when they got, they begin to fall on one another. They begin to slay one another. They thought that there's an armies and armies. And matter of fact, I believe if I'm not mis if I'm not confused here, uh, if I am, I'm sure Sister Christian will take care of that. Uh, but if I'm confused, you you help me out with this week. Uh, but I believe they said they have hired people to come against us. They went out and employed armies to come and fight us, and it wouldn't fight in the world but a choir and some soldiers. God sent a great army, a great victory, and the place in the valley was called the Valley of Baraka. The, the word Baraka meant blessing. And the Bible said, listen to this, this ought to, this ought, this ought to get you. The Bible said they were three days gathering all the spoil of the enemy because it was so much that God had blessed them so much that it took them three days to gather up all the blessings. Let me tell you, I've had God to bless me. You have. We've all had God's blessings on our life. It didn't take me three days to gather it up. But it took them three days and, and they began to gather up all the spoil there. And they gathered it up that day and it took them three days to gather it up. And none, the Bible said, in verse 24 of chapter 20 of 2 Corinthians, and Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness. They looked into the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen on the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat, the king, and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, jewels, which are stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka until this day. What a blessing. God does the math when we need it. When I'm down, when I've gone my limit, when I've went as far as I feel that I can go, God always comes. God made a promise to Abraham in Hebrews 6, 13, for when God made promises to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, Blessing, I will bless thee and multiply. I will multiply. I'm fixing to close here in just about another half an hour. Uh, I'm going to cover one more story. If you, if you, if you stay with me just for, just for a moment. One more story. And then all the little stories in between. It was Elisha, the prophet. Sister Cree said that asked for the double portion of Elijah. Remember him? When he was starting to follow Elijah, Elijah said, what do you want from me? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Ain't it odd, Joe, that he didn't ask for a double portion of his talent? He didn't ask, you know, a double, I'd like to have a double portion of what these girls got when it comes to music and what some of you all have. I don't even have, how can I say, I don't even have a less of a double portion. I don't have nothing. When it comes to music. 
He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, you've asked a hard thing, but if you keep your eyes on me, when I leave here, if you're watching, you'll get it. Boy, isn't that something? Isn't that what I promise? I can almost visualize. I can almost come at you. Come at you. Now, now, you're Elijah. You, you, you're the head of the I want you to walk. I want you to walk. So that back walk. I'm Elijah. Here's what Elijah's doing. When Elijah stopped, Elijah took over. You saw you don't know that. Well, you don't know he didn't. He stayed close enough, Roger. He said, when he leaves here, I, I'm, I'm going to get what he's got. Oh, you're not, you're not, you don't know where I'm going. I know where I wrote the notes. I know where I'm going. He stayed close enough for that man that he wanted what Elijah had. And he said, I'm going to get it. Whatever I have to do to get it, I'm going to get it. Now, I come to preach to somebody tonight. You can have that double portion tonight. You just need to let God do the man. The, the enemy, who was it sung that song? The enemy's not so strong. That the two girls are saying, the enemy's not so strong. He's not near as strong as we, as we let him out or as we make him up to be. I wish I could remember that song. I just sing it. No, I really wouldn't. It was in 2 Kings chapter 7 that Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shackle and two measures of barley for a shackle in the gate of Samaria. There's a famine in the land, y'all. There's nothing to eat. There's nothing to drink. There's a famine. Then a lord of whose hand the king leaned on answered and said, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Here, here's, here's a beautiful story. Listen. And there were four leper men in the inner end of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit here until we die? What a beautiful story. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we will, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the hope of the city. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Are you ready? And they rose early in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Verse 6 said, For the Lord done the man. I just put that part in. For the Lord had made the host of Syria to hear a noise of chariots, a noise of horses, even the noises of a great host. And they said one to another. Here's my first, I was quite trying to quote Moviana. Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Etites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. And it wasn't a thing in the world. You ready? Four leper men. And they might have been ticked. On. You know how you do when you know a dog's a bad dog in a house. You don't want to wake him up. Not that slob. Sleep. They begin to listen. I hear an army come. I hear their tanks and their APCs. I hear all this stuff. They've hired an army against us. We better get out of Dodge. Get out of here. And what but fool me? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying God did the man. God. What did the what did Joab tell David? 
Don't you know that God is able to add whatever we have to have to win the battle? I'm preaching to somebody. I want you to add some stuff tonight. Allow God to do the match in your life and allow God to bless you. It's necessary for me to let God have His way in my life. God's able. Come up to the piano, Rebecca. Wherever you're at. God's able to do whatever is necessary to fulfill His will in your life. God's able. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that He's concerned about us. God can add to your situation whatever it is you need. I want to let God do the math in my life. When I'm fighting the enemy, I want God to do the man. I want God to add to my life. When I let God do the map in my life, this is the last thing I'm going to say. His desire for my life will be accomplished when I let Him work in my life. Stand with God. You that are in a battle, you that are not in the world. Come tonight. Come tonight. Gather around these altars. Make you a place. And talk to the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, do the bad in our lives. Oh, God, do the bad. Lord, touch us tonight.